Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Geomatics Engineering. So in today's lecture, we are going to learn about how to identify a flood affected area in Google Earth Engine using a Sentinel-1A imagery. So before starting this tutorial, let me tell you about the methodology that we are going to use. So here I have created a flowchart for this methodology. So first step our method is to collect the satellite image. So for the satellite imagery, we are going to take the Sentinel-1 imagery as it is cloud free and freely available and at the spatial resolution of 10 meter. And then our next step is to filter out the before flood imagery and the after flood imagery from this collection. So for this tutorial, our before flood imagery is from May month and after flood imagery is from October month because the area of interest that we are going to take is affected by flood in October 2022. And after that, we have to apply a smoothening filter on both of these images, the before flood and after flood. The smoothening filter is applied on the Sentinel-1A image for removing the speckle effect from the images. Because speckle effect can cause an error in the output when we are working on any project where we have to identify any waterlogged area or flood area. So, sometimes speckles are also appear as a waterlogged area. That's why we have to apply a smoothening filter. And then our next step is to create a difference image from this smoothening filter image of before and after flood. And then all the values which are less than minus 3 have to extract it from this difference image. And that extracted values will be appeared as a flood extent. So this is going to be our methodology for today's tutorial. So how can we do this in Google Earth Engine? So let's see it in Google Earth Engine. So here I have opened a blank script in Earth Engine and named it as a flood detection. So for today's tutorial, our area of interest is going to be the Gorakhpur district of Uttar Pradesh. So I have a shape file of all the Indian districts in my asset section. So from this shape file, I will extract the Gorakhpur district. So for extracting this, we have to click on this import tool just by clicking on this arrow and after clicking on this arrow you can see that the shape file is appearing in the import section and its name is table so from this table shape file we have to extract the gorakhpur district so our first step is to extract the gorakhpur district from table shape file so for this we have to create a new variable which i'm giving the name as aoi so within this aoi variable firstly we have to select this table because the gorakhpur district is stored in the shape file so paste this table and we have to filter filter the gorakhpur for that we have to write a function ee dot filter dot eq eq is used for equivalent and where the district name is equals to Gorakhpur, it will be extracted out. So, this district name as Gorakhpur is mentioned in the shape files attribute table as the header of that attribute is district name and the district name is in the attribute table as Gorakhpur. So, our shape file is extracted. Just add it into map layer. So, for that we have to write map dot add layer and add this AOI in the map section. I am leaving blank the visualization parameter and name it as AOI for the layers and click on run. Now you can see that the Gorakhpur district shape file is extracted out. So, our next task is then to import the satellite image collection. So, for that I am going to create a new variable, variable collection and we have to take a Sentinel-1A image collection. For that we have to search for a raster Sentinel and after clicking on the Sentinel-1 SAR GRD, you can see that this Earth Engine snippet code. So, just copy this code and paste it. So, we have selected the image collection of Sentinel-1A. Now, set a boundary for it and our boundary is stored in the AOI. So, dot filter bounds AOI and then the next step is to filter out the bands. So, when we see the band section of the Sentinel-1 image, there are four bands and we have to select the VV band from it. So, for VV band selection, if you go into the image properties, you can see a term that is transmitter receiver polarization. 
so all the bands vv hh vv vh and hh hv is stored in a list format in this transmitter receiver polarization so for band extraction we have to write a function that is dot filter and within this we have to write e dot filter so bands are stored in a list so we have to write list contains so where the list contains this transmitter receiver polarization as vv filter it out now the vv band is filtered out now we have to select this vv band now we have imported the satellite imagery collection and filtered the boundary for it and also the vv band is selected so next according to our methodology the next part is to filter the before flood imagery and after flood imagery from this image collection so our next part is to filter the before and after flood imagery so for that we have to create two new variables variable before and variable after and within this before variable we have to filter out the may month data from this collection of imagery so we have selected this collection and from this we have to dot filter date and for the before flood imagery we have to take the may month data so i am taking the data from 1st may 2022 to 15th may so for that we have to firstly write the start date that is 2022-0501 and then the end date so our end date is 2022-05 and 15 and now in this before variable all the 15 days image collection is stored so this is a image collection and we have to create a single image from this collection so for that we have to just write another function dot mosaic it will create a single image from this image collection now just copy this code and paste it in below line and here we have to just change the start date and end date because for the after flood imagery we have to take the 1st october 2022 to 30th october 2022 because for this gorakhpur region in the whole october month of 2022 there was a flood and now we have completed the second step of the methodology that is filtering out the before flood and after flood imagery and next i am going to clip these imagery from our aoi so for that we have to create a new variable variable before underscore clip and also new variable after underscore clip so for clipping it with aoi you have to take the imagery first so our imagery is stored in this before variable and we have to clip it from aoi and same for the after we have to first take the imagery after and clip it from aoi so now our imagery is clipped from aoi and then our next step is to apply smoothening filter as we can see that in our methodology we have to one by one apply smoothening filter on both the images the before flood and after flood so i am going to create a new variable variable before s that is for before smoothening so for this we have to take firstly this before clip imagery and for applying the smoothening filter we have to write a function focal underscore median and within this focal median we have to select a smoothening radius so smoothening radius is basically when the smoothening filter is applied on any pixel at what extent this filter should be applied on a single pixel so i wanted it to apply on 30 meter extent for each pixel so this 30 meter extent should be applied in a circular kernel and applied in a meters like the extent is calculated in meters this 30 meters so smoothening filter is applied on before imagery same we have to do for after flood imagery for that i am going to create new variable variable after underscore s and i'm just copying this above code and pasting it it below we have to just change the input imagery for this as we are applying the smoothening filter on after flood imagery so we have to replace this before clip from after clip now the smoothening filter is applied on both the images and then our next part is to 
create a difference of these images so i'm going to create a new variable variable difference and we just have to subtract the after imagery dot subtract from the before imagery now the difference is applied and when we see the methodology we have applied the smoothening filter on both the before and after flood imagery and also created a difference from these images and next task is to extract all the values which are less than minus 3 so for that i am going to create a new variable variable flood extent and within this flood extent we have to take this difference imagery because from this difference imagery the values which are less than lt is used for less than the values which are less than minus 3 will be extracted so now in this flood extent variable we can see the imagery that is classified into two part the flooded areas and the non flooded areas but we all only want to see the flooded areas so for that i'm going to create a new variable flood and within this flood we are going to mask this flood extent for masking i'm write the function update mask from itself so flood extent dot update mask from flood extent now our final flood layer is stored in this variable flood and the next part of this code is to displaying all these layers that we have created so display maps so for map displaying we have to write a function map dot add layer so i am going to visualize four layers the before flood imagery the after flood imagery the difference imagery and the final flood layer so firstly i am going to map dot add layer this before flood imagery that is stored in this before clip so before flood imagery and for visualization parameter i am taking the minimum value as minus 30 and the maximum value as 0 and for it layer's name i am giving it the name as before flood and for the next layer visualization i am just copying it and pasting it in the next line and we have to replace this before clip from after clip and change the layer name from before flood to after flood so our two layers are added here and our next layer is going to be the difference image so for that i am going to write the map dot add layer and within the brackets we have to take this difference imagery and i'm leaving the visualization parameter blank i'm giving the layer name as difference and then our next layer is map dot add layer that is our final flood layer so i am taking this flood layer visualization parameter is blank and layer's name is flood so our code is completed now save this code and click on run so when you run this code you can see there are four layers there are five layers so because we already added the aoi in the starting of this code so all these layers are added here so we are going to see all these layers one by one so i am turning off all these layers and firstly we will see this before flood layer so here you can see this all the water bodies are appearing in black so this is the before flood layer where all the permanent water bodies are showing as black but when you turn on this after flood layer you can see the flood extent all these black pixels are showing the flood area as you can see the flood is affecting a large agriculture area so we have to extract all these flood extent in a separate raster layer so for that we have created a new difference layer so when you change this difference layer visualization so i'm stretching it values and applying and when i zoom into this layer you can see that all the pixels are showing a smoothening effect as it is applied in a circular form when i turn off this layer and turn on the after flood layer you can see that the pixels has a effect of speckle noise and in the difference image all the noise are removed and the pixels are in a smooth form and now we will see our final flood layer so all these white pixels are showing the final flood layer let me change it color symbology so from layer section stretch it and in the color 
palette, I am taking the blue color. Now click on OK, apply. Now here you can see that all the flood affected area is extracted. So in the blue color pixels, you can see that all the flood areas are appearing. And also you can see that the permanent water pixels are separated from this layer. So if you wanted to export this flood extent imagery, you can also export it. So for that, you have to write export dot image dot to drive and now you have to define some key value parameters so firstly we have to define the image so which image you want to export so we wanted to export this flood imagery flood imagery into float so dot float now put a comma now provide a description as in the taskbar when it is exporting the description name will be appeared so i'm giving the description name as flood gkp again putting a comma and next we have to define a scale so our scale is 10 meter because the sentinel 1a imagery is 10 meter resolution next we have to define a maximum pixels because sometimes it shows an error that's why we have to define a maximum pixel value that i am giving it as 1 e 1 3 now again put a comma next we have to define the reason that is our AOI and the final we have to define a CRS that is EPSG4326 that is used for WGS84 that is showing the coordinate system. So now all the export parameters are written and now save the code and click on run. Now in the task manager you can see a new unsubmitted task is appearing here flood GKP. Now click on run and give a drive folder name because in the Google Drive this drive folder will be appeared where this flood GKP image will be stored. Now click on run and now you can see that the image exporting is starting already and when this grey bar is turned into a blue the image will be successfully exported and you can download it from your Google Drive. So I hope you all understand about how we can identify a flood affected area using Sentinel 1A imagery in Google Earth Engine. So if you learned from this lecture let me know about it in comment section and share this vi video with others thank you so much